You're listening to First Fossil. Welcome to First Fossil, a show where we learn together how to take that first fossil toward becoming the best versions of ourselves. My name is Candice Olushala, and today I have an old friend from college, throwback to gospel choir. Super excited to talk with him today, and guys, he's pretty awesome. Also a fellow podcaster, so we'll definitely do a plug for his show here in a bit, but Without further ado, please welcome my boy, Brandon Strawn. How you doing, man? What's up, Candice? I'm excited to be on the show. I'll talk about my first paso, as yes. you say. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I am. I'm excited. This is going to be good. It's going to be real good. Good, good. How, how, how have things been for you in general? There's a, we've had, Great. it's been a few years since we like, actually, right. Person. I know in the flesh. Yeah, it's been crazy, but, but no, I, I, um, I mean, right now I can only just say that God has been really good. Um, I've done a couple of things such as, uh, get married since we last saw each other, um, got a a new career, even new job and, um, started a podcast purpose driven risk podcast. So just a lot of cool things that's going on, but, um, I'm super blessed. I'm super blessed. Good. I love that. I'm so I'm always so proud of all of my like gospel choir kiddos. Y'all I know, are, right? Y'all are grown adults. Let me let me be clear. But right. Me, y'all are my kiddos. So so proud of you guys and what you guys have been doing. It's it's just been nice to follow everyone on social media, see where they are, where life is taking them. So very proud of you, by the way. No, I, I appreciate that. that. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself before we go into your first puzzle. All glory to God, because I actually just got a new position like last Friday. Okay. Um, I, I'm a recruiter for Advent Health, um, where I was, you know, recruiting like nurses and then also some, um, you know, financial finance positions as well. But starting like next month in October, um, I'll actually be going to like 13 to 13 heritage Adventist schools or accredited Adventist schools, um, universities to be exact. And doing recruiting there specifically for like the uh, new nurses. So the nursing uh, nurses that are getting ready to graduate, like senior nurses getting ready to graduate. We're trying to obviously get them to come and work for Advent Health, uh, which is the best place in the world to work. Just a little plug. Of course, I'm biased. But and then also talking to the finance majors or business majors that are graduating to go ahead and get internships um, for, you know, for them and, and pretty much hire, hire some people. So it's, it's really cool because I've always wanted to like really get from behind the desk and really use my voice to speak to the youth and, um, you know, to, to hopefully, uh, give a career path or some guidance, you know, or that first step, I promise this was not planned, but that first step to, you know, students, um, and, and youth. So this is like totally in the vein of what I saw for, you know, for my life. And so it took me a while to get here, but, um, but yeah, so I, that's what I do outside of podcasting, right. I'm working, obviously somebody's got to pay the bills around here. Um, somebody, you know what I'm saying? Somebody got to tell my wife that, right. You know, (laughs) bills got to get paid, but no, no, um, no. So pretty much, you know, doing that and just spending time with my wife, you know, uh, we, we got married, um, a little over two years ago. So I would say we're, we're still in the honeymoon slash, you know, getting to know each other as married people. So we spend a lot of time together on the weekends, um, whether it's like eating at a new spot that we saw or, you know, going dancing or whatever. But that's pretty much it. You know, when I'm not when I'm not working, I'm podcasting. When I'm not podcasting, I'm working. When I'm not doing either of those things, um, you know, I'm spending time, time with my wife. So, yeah. I love that. And his wife was in gospel choir too. So it's super cute. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, the amount of couples that came out of that choir is just, no, you I know, know it crazy. really like bred marriages for real. It really for real. pretty great. Hey, Candace here. You might not know this, but outside of podcasting and public speaking, I actually offer life coaching. 
So when coaching with me, I create a safe space for us to have real conversations. I get to ask thought-provoking questions and provide tools and principles that I've learned and applied in my personal journey through life. We get to laugh. We sometimes cry. (laughs) But we ultimately get to celebrate the steps that you boldly take through your journey in your life. And then for those who are specifically looking for it or might be a little bit curious as to how this would even fit into their world, I also add a faith-based approach. No matter what season of life you're in with God, and even if you don't know God, I can offer those services as well. Now, coaching is no joke. It takes tough work. And it's also not for everyone, but it is a great way to help propel you forward into the life that you truly want to live. So if you feel trapped living an unfulfilled life and are ready to shift your perception to break free from your shackled mindset, if you believe that it's time to finally start living the life you have always dreamt of living and are ready to do whatever it takes to make that your reality, if you're actually really excited about the idea of living life as your whole self, free to step boldly into everything you were created to be, and if you're ready to embark on the journey to self-acceptance, joy, confidence, true love, and so much more, then head to my website at www.firstbasso.com to fill out the application form today for the possibility of us working together to reach your breakthrough to living your most fulfilled life for the rest of your life. Okay, so then... I'm, I'm very curious as I'm sure everyone else is what for you is a significant first Basso story. Um, you know, I think that I have, I have many, um, and they may all merge together, but to me, a first Basso story would be like me actually moving from Chattanooga, Tennessee to Tampa, um, in Tampa, Florida. So I say that because that was like my first step into taking the leap of faith, so to speak, right? Because um, I did not know one person in Tampa prior to moving. I actually, even though I lived in Florida and technically grew up um, in South Florida, which is like Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, I had never been to Tampa ever. Florida's big state, you guys. So, you know, don't, don't shame me for not going to a city, you know, in Florida. There's a lot of cities in Florida, but I'd never been. Um, my friend called me and he said, hey, you know, I have a great job opportunity if you're interested. And at the time, my, you know, my my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, we were doing long distance for maybe three years at this point. And, you know, it was really time for me to like take the next paso, right? That next step. Um, and so for me, I think that it was an experience that I I was, I think, semi-prepared for. But what it entailed was me moving from social work and like entering into recruiting and talent acquisition and HR, which I had never done before. I never even thought I would be doing that because I had graduated with my social work degree. And then, you know, after after that, I was working in social work um, in the city that I you know went to school. in. <clears throat> excuse me. So for me, that was like my first step, because I remember, you know, a lot of a lot of tough days. Um, I I mean, I sold everything that I had. And at the time I had received the offer from the job in Tampa, but I was, I was still had a lease, um, on my, my apartment. So I couldn't like just, you know, I would have to either break the lease and pay a bunch of money that I already didn't have. And so I was just trusting in God. Like I had one month, they gave me 30 days to report to the job. And I had one month to find someone who could sublease this so that I didn't have to pay out the rest of um, you know, the rest of the, uh, or, or, or break the lease, excuse me. Um, and so when I tell you it came down to the last three days and I was just like shaking in my boots. I'm like, if they take this, if, if I have to break the lease, if I leave, I have to break the lease, they are going to be 
they're going to put me in the negative, right? They're going to go and try to grab that money from my bank. And my bank's going to be like, this guy's got nothing, you know? So, um, so for me, I'm just like, you know, God, you got to make this happen. So three days before there was a family that was actually moving from like Maryland or someplace. And they were pretty much in the same predicament as me. They're looking for housing really quickly until they can really find something and settle. And so we, we did the deal, was able to be subleased. And, you know, I say that to say that was like my first apostle because what came after, you know, me moving was a lot of things and experiences that I never even really imagined could happen. Okay, so you were in Chattanooga. Yep. Right? Chattown. Chattown, yes. Yep. Yep. And girlfriend at the time was already in Florida? Yes, yeah. she was in she was in Orlando. Right. I didn't explain that. To clarify, yes, she was in Orlando. So Tampa was as close as I could get because I had been applying to positions, but I just didn't I wasn't getting them, to be honest. Um, so yeah. Okay. Okay. So you decided to move down there and you guys were long distance for like three years. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, when we met at Southern or excuse me, when we decided to start dating, I didn't know this at the time when I was like, Hey, I'm interested in you. Like, you know, let's like, let's do this thing. You know, she was just like, I'm, I'm going to Andrews next year. I was like, what? I was like, I didn't know that. And so, yeah, so from the point, like from the time that we started dating, it was all long distance. So we knew each other as friends prior to that, right? Like being in choir, I knew her just, you know, because she went to my school. Um, but, but yeah, once I told her I was interested and we actually started talking, that was all, all long distance. But I will say this, we are from the same city um, in Fort Lauderdale back home. I never saw her before. Not, I, I never hung out with her uh, you know, back home. But then when we got to college, that's actually when we, when we really met. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I will say that even though we were long distance when, you know, I wasn't in school on summer break or she wasn't in school, uh, we did get to hang, you know, when we were back home. So for the summers. Okay. So did you feel really nervous about moving to Tampa? Like what, what was your, thought process leading up to the actual move itself like how are you processing that feeling were you questioning yourself like what was of that? course for me it was about understanding that this you know this move at the time when I was in in, in Chattanooga I was working as a social worker case manager and I loved what I did absolutely loved I was working with inner city youth specifically boys um who either had um you know, had uh, committed a crime and they gave them a choice. Hey, you can either go to juvenile or you could uh, work this program uh, with, you know, with this youth program that we have for at the residential um, area or also, you know, young boys, at high school age, middle, middle and high school age who had been taken out of their home because of, you know, their parent. Um, and so I was working with the population that I felt really close to, really attached to. Like, I know what it is like as a young person to come from a single home, um, you know, to have my mom just, you know, oh, my goodness. I was I was that that guy who was just getting into things and just really giving my mom a run for her money. So I felt really attached to that. And I also, you know, had a social worker or when I say had a social worker, there was a school social worker at our school and, you know, times where I did feel, you know, like I needed to talk to someone. She was there for me. Um, and she was actually at Venice too. And she, she actually um, went to my church. Um, and so it was, it was really cool for me to see that now from a young boy being like, Hey, I know that this social worker helped me through a lot of tough times. And then now be to be a social worker and to be doing that, right. I'm in Chattanooga and I'm loving my position. Um, and so I, now I wasn't making a lot of money. So it was really like an internal battle because I had never recruited, you know, in, in my life. Um, I didn't know what that was like. I just knew that I was a people person and I killed the interview and my friend was able to, you know, put me on, so to speak, shout out to, you know, Black people, Black brothers putting Black brothers on. I appreciate that um, because he didn't have to and he did. Um, and so, you know, I, I saw a huge increase in my salary. So I had to weigh a couple of things. I'm like, okay, am I, am I going to pull myself from what I believe right now is currently my purpose in assisting with, you know, the inner city youth, assisting with um, 
reuniting families together through therapy and through counseling. Um, and you know, what I see as making a community a better place, right. In my way, um, or am I going to go and be in Tampa, which is like an hour and 15 minutes away from where my, you know, at the time girlfriend was of at that time, probably like three or four years, um, you know, and, and start to, you know, live a life or build a life down there so that we could be together. So it was a very, very hard first possible first step to make, because, you know, even sometimes you think about it, you know, am I going to resent mm. my wife? Like, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to resent my wife, right? Or or girlfriend. Woo! If it works out, we're all good. Everybody's good, right? But if it doesn't, and, and there's really no, like, cool way to say it. Like, it just is what it is. Like, you moved for that person, right? Yes, I moved for, you know, an increase in pay, but I didn't feel like that move aligned with like where I saw my life, right? God had other plans. He worked it out to where I can, I got back to where I needed to be. But at the time I couldn't see anything or any reason why this would be the better move besides the fact that I'm insanely in love with this girl. And I really want to make sure that she sees my effort, right? Like the Bible says it like, are we, is it cool if like I talk about yeah, talk about Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, I'm just, I just, my, my I don't people know. know. My people okay. know I love Jesus. Okay, okay, no, okay. Not a Christian podcast, so you can bring in Jesus. They just go learn a little something. something. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> so as for me, you know, like you know, the Bible says, "Hey, like you know, you you leave your home and you know, uh, and build your own family." Right. I'm paraphrasing, but I I took that to heart. Right. Like I need to be the one. Um, who, you know, if makes a sacrifice so that I can prove, you know, if I'm courting someone, if I'm pursuing someone, um, you know, I need to be able to say that I've done the things that would reflect that. So, um, so I made, I made the, I made the move. And so, yeah. So to your question, like what made it hard? Like that was at to, to date, that was like the hardest decision because I just saw a real future. And even at the time, right before I left, like my manager was like, Hey, I'm leaving. Do you want my position? I'm like, wait, okay. So you're telling me I could be running this group home. It, it was, we worked for the, for the state, but it was, you know, ran by the group, uh, the group home, excuse me, was ran by the state. So I was just like, no way I get to plan activities. I get to do, you know? So when I tell you like, that was probably one of the hardest decisions that I had to make. Like I was almost willing to say like, Hey, I don't think, I don't think we're going to work. Right. And I was like this close, right. This close, but but yeah, so I, I won't go any further, but to answer your question, yeah, it was, wow, hard decision, yeah. Okay, that's not just a, like, I moved because of, like, job stuff. There, there's there's romance in this story. There is, there is, there that's, is. Yeah. That's, that is hard. Right. That is a hard decision, especially with all of these opportunities that keep popping up right as you're planning on the idea of moving, you know, yep. that is a yep. test. That is a test. Yeah. yeah. So you, 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 you made the move, mm -hmm. you made the move. And what happened once you got there? So when I got there, I, I was living with, um, with the friend that had, you know, put me on, so to speak, or helped me get the job. Um, mm -hmm. he was like, Hey, come by me. You could live here for, you know, a month you know, take some time to get back. Mind you, like I, when I say I spent my savings, like I know people like say that because it sounds cool to say, but like, I really like had 0.00 dollars like in my account. I was like eating, eating Taco Bell every day um, because I had to use my savings just to like, just to make it there. Right. And mind you, I'm talking about Chattanooga. You're not making a lot of money as a social worker. I was surviving. Right. And I understood that, you know, everyone has to pay their dues. Right. I, I had just been out of college maybe two years. So from being out of college, I had been a direct care worker and then I got up to becoming a case manager. So maybe like a year and a half, right? So I wasn't making crazy money right when I left. So I didn't have a lot of money to bring with me, but I get there and um, I'm living with my friend, but the job, the job was really tough because it was, you had a base salary, but it was also commission based. So you're recruiting nurses, physicians, um, really any anyone in the healthcare field. Um, and so LPN, CNAs, right? And you're making a percentage of on each, you know, on each deal because this is travel nursing. So it was different because with social work, you know, not that not that people in recruiting don't have a heart, but with social work, 
there really isn't any commission, right? You, you're rewarded by what you're doing on a day-to-day basis, but it's not mon- monetary, right? So you really have the passion and, you know, you can see the change that you're making and it's not really driven by money because if you're a social worker, not to say that some social workers aren't making money, but the majority of social workers are not, that's just the truth. And so, you know, that what you're doing day to day, when you're getting up, when and you're having to go uh, to court four or five times a week, sometimes four or five times in two to three days, um, you know, that that is all because you, you love what you do. Right. But now moving to a position where, Everything that I did was driven by money. So every time I'm on a phone with a nurse, a doctor, uh, you know, nursing home administrator, whatever it may be, I know that if I can get them to agree to accept one of our positions, I'm going to make a percentage off of what they're the deal that you know that that they have, the contract that they have. And so, like I said, while the base salary was also more than what I was making in uh, Chattanooga as a social worker, I knew that I like it was limitless. I could make commission and probably make as much money um, as I wanted to, which I eventually did. So the job was hard. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like I was in there working like from eight to eight, right? Because they don't care. They didn't care when you worked, didn't care when you clocked in. They just knew that every month you had a quota to make. And if you didn't, they would have a discussion, right? So this is like real life Wolf of Wall Street type stuff, you know, like, so you, you, you eat what you kill, right? And that was new to me, not in the sense of survival, because I, I really did grow up like lower middle class and really had to make sure that um, I was a good steward of my money and that I, you know, worked hard for opportunities and grabbed opportunities when I saw them. But this was a little bit different because I had never been been in a situation where I was in a commission job um, and then also had, you know, managers breathing down your neck like, hey, how many sales did you make today or yesterday or whatever? So to answer your question, like it was, it was rough, right? I was successful, um, but it was at the expense of me being unhappy, you know, uh, for the majority of it, because it, it really was, you know, it really was tough work, especially when you're not that person that says, Hey, when I grow up, I'm going to be a recruiter, right? If you say that, then that's cool. You're in your, in your realm, you're in what, what you were hoping to be in, but that wasn't, that wasn't what I thought. So, yeah. Mm. Did that instill any feelings of regret about what you were doing? So I think it, I think it definitely did, but because I was successful in successful up into a certain point, which hope maybe we'll get there later. But in the first, like I worked there for three years and like two months, whatever. Right. So in the first year, year, oh no, in the first two years, I should say, or two years and a half. I was like highly successful, right? I was chosen to go, uh, they, they uh, had me go down to like a trade show, which is like a huge travel uh, showcase in Las Vegas to represent the company. And I was like, I just got here. This is like within the year of me getting there. They're like, no, you're doing great. We love your spirit. We need you to go and, um, you know, and speak to these nurses and help recruit as many, you know, as possible. And so I say that to say, even though I didn't like it, I was... I was succeeding at it. Like I was doing great at it and I was making a lot of money, you know, from it. So I think even though I didn't enjoy it, I don't, I I don't know if I would say regret because I paid off a ton of debt, right? I was able to financially see my growth and I was like, you know what, this kind of makes it okay, right? Like I'm able to make sure that I can, you know, provide for myself, but also start to build a foundation for my future family. At this time, you know, my, my wife and I are definitely talking about our well, current wife now, but at the time, girlfriend talking about marriage. And we're like, hey, we're, we have agreed, like marriage is 100% in, in the very near future. So that job allowed me to build a foundation financially so that when she comes along and, and she was in school. So, you know, she has a great job now and we equally contribute, you know, that's just how we have it set up. That's what we enjoy. But at the time, you know, she wasn't making a lot of money because she was doing her masters and finishing up that externship. That's why she was in Orlando, um, which led into her job. So, so yes, so it was, it was points of regret, but then every Friday when I would get paid or every, or, or every other Friday. And then when that monthly commission hit, I was like, I think I could do this. I can keep going. Right. Um, 
but but yeah, you know, there were times where I was like, why did I even why did I even come out here? You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. So how much longer after you you were you had moved, been in the job? how much longer until you guys ended up getting married? So it was, so I moved here in 2018, July, 2018. We got married in January of 2020, January of 2020. Yes. So it was like, you know, it was, it was a little while, you know, two years. Um, And so I just think that, and, and, at every point, right? So if I go back, I was telling her like, hey, you should come to Chattanooga, move out here. Like, I'm going to get things settled here. She was like, I really don't like Chattanooga, but I'll try, you know, and she's a speech therapist. So, you know, she tried to get a jobs and positions there, but because it's a small town, you know, there, there weren't many speech therapist pos- therapy positions there. And she, she was like, I don't see my career growing there, you know? And so that was also another reason why I was like, listen, she's probably not going to come. So I'm going to have to go. Um, and so, but to answer your question, you know, it was, it was a good two and a half years or probably a little bit under if my math is right. Yeah. Yeah. Until, until we, until we got married and we actually just went to the courthouse and like did it. And then we had an actual ceremony later that year in December, but yeah, we went to the courthouse and then we like went to work the very same day. <laughs> I'm is crazy. crying. It's like got yep. the paper, got, yep. got, got the deed in hand. Yep. I'll go to work. I'll see you later. And yep. <laughs> I'll talk soon. Exactly. Exactly. I cannot, guys. That's that's real marriage. I just I just want to put that out there. It's like honeymoon. We 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 gotta eat. <laughs> I'm going to work. What are you talking about? I gotta Listen. eat. What? It's and that was a big thing. Like we both come from situations where like for her for her family like she was more well off than like I grew up right but she was still like I would say middle class but her parents and I say this because I watched her dad like as I started dating her from like what I was 21 right when we started dating um and so at that time in 2018 I'm probably like uh 26 now or 25 and so for the last four years, I've been able to see, uh, you know, how her dad does things, how her, her dad is like such a good steward of what he has. And that was kind of like his thing. And so I knew that she came because she was raised by her dad. Her, her mother was in her life as well, but then they eventually like got divorced. Um, so like some of the latter years were, were, you know, her dad, a lot of influence from her dad. I knew that I had to build a foundation that was similar to what she was used to, right? It doesn't mean that she was bougie at all. Right. Because she didn't come from that. But I was just saying, I knew that I, I grew up with so less that I had to make sure that I was coming correct because one, I I know what I want for my family and it's not what I had. Right. Not to say that what my parents did for me wasn't great. Like, I think I'm super rich in character and I'm rich in like a ton of things that have nothing to do with money because like at times all we had was the ability to spend time with each other. And that was like our rich and our wealth. And um, I think that that has a whole nother meaning, right? But as far as like financially, like that wasn't us. So I wanted to make sure that I had, you know, different things set up for my family. And then I also knew that there was a standard that she was used to that I don't want to bring someone in on this and have them decline, right? There may be times and we've had it um, even recently where it's like, Hey man, we're, we got to get on our ramen noodle like budget right here because we're trying to accomplish some things. And she's like, bet, let's do it. Right. Yeah. But as far as like the, the standard is like, Hey, here's where we want to be. Not only because that's where we want to be, but nobody wants to like get married to someone that's like having them take a couple steps back like that. That's not highly, highly unsuggestible. I don't even know that's a word, but yeah, don't suggest it. Yeah. See, I I really like this first Bustle story because it has some layers to it as far as, you know, making this big move after being, especially after being in a long-term relationship, pretty much long distance the majority of the time and having things that are glamorous to you and where you were at the time popping up right around the same time you're having to make this big decision and yet, despite those things, you still chose to move 
you kind of kicked yourself for a little bit. And yet Mm -hmm. after that, things are starting to unfold again. So I don't know that that's actually, to be honest, very encouraging for me, you know, as someone who, I mean, I didn't leave my state, but I did leave working in my profession. Right. right? And so um, that those seasons of questioning, like, Mm -hmm. Ooh, was that the right move? You know, like, Was right. that what I needed to do? What, you know, what's going on and kind of writing through those, those seasons right. to see it finally come to fruition, even if it's not that month or that year it might be a year and a half, two years right. before you actually see like, okay, okay. Like this is, this was worth it. This was worth right. it. Right. Time. But you know, for you, now that you guys are where you are, first off, also side, I love that you guys have like a just in case let's do ramen budget because yes. I think every I don't care if you are a billionaire or not. I think everyone should have the just in case we need to stay on ramen. <laughs> let's right. keep that on the side already prepared right. so we just know how to ship real quick. Yeah, you know, yeah, get yep. get that ramen budget yep. on, on lock, guys. Um. But I guess my my question then for you is what what for you were the biggest lessons that you took out of that experience that you would want someone else who might be in a similar situation or just making those big decisions? It feels like a really big decision and you have a lot of factors to consider while simultaneously there's some things that are very enticing that could affect whether or not you actually take that leap of faith what what for you did you take from this experience that you would want someone else to hopefully apply in their situation that's a that's a great question you're definitely good at you're definitely good at this podcast thing so um (laughs) one i would say i learned that like i understand when people say you only live once you really do have to make like the decisions and lead with your heart right because at the end of the day, when you get to that point where you've made that decision and then you realize like it wasn't that deep, right? So it's just like, ah, oh, okay, like it wasn't it wasn't that deep to begin with. Now, there are some situations that are really tough decisions, which I feel like mine was, but I guess what I'm saying is like I don't want you to harp on it and beat yourself up, even if you think it was a bad decision. Here's why you don't harp on it and you don't beat yourself up. What I learned is that when you're going through those seasons, right? Like, so when I left and I, there was years, like right now we're in 2022. I left in 2018, right? 2019, 20, 21, 22. So let's just call it like four and a half years, right? To where I am now. Every stop that I made in between 2018, when I left in 2022, I made a commitment to operate in every season with excellence and like truly being content with where I was. So even though, and and what I mean by that is when I got to that job, I realized like quickly, I didn't like it, but I was, I was adamant about making sure that I was the best recruiter that I could be. Like, I wasn't going to just, uh, you know, BS around, you know, in the job or quiet quit or whatever. And that's a whole nother thing. But I just wanted to make sure that, um, and it's, and like I said, that's the part where what I received from my parents, the character, the being rich in integrity, like that's what I got from my parents and it's just in me. So even though I hated that job, right, I operated with integrity and I wanted to make sure that I did the best that I could, even though I felt like I was like, God, I moved and yes, I'm making more money, but I do not enjoy this at all. And I could hear God's voice telling me like, hey, continue, push towards the mark because that allowed me to elevate, to go to Vegas, to be the person that speaks, you know, at different conference meetings for our company. And I'm like, okay, I get it. That's awesome. Now, when I left that company, I went to Advent Health. At Advent Health, I was kind of doing the same thing that I was before, but no commission, right? And I'm like, God, once again, I feel like I'm working the same amount of hours, right? Because now I'm corporate, but I'm not getting commission, right? And love Advent Health is just that there's a lot of work to be done in hiring nurses, right? It's, it's just, it's very, um, it's very heavy work, right? And so I was like, God, man, I, I feel like I'm not really enjoying this. He was like, no, like be diligent, be the best recruiter that you can be 
at this very moment, which led to those are the two jobs that I had in between getting this new job 2022 as of last week, where I'm able to get back to going out, speaking to the youth, having the helping them with making their life decisions. So I know I was all over the place, but to answer your question directly, what I learned is that when you think you're not in the right place, still give your 110%, still operate with a ton of character, a ton of integrity, and try to be the best. Because each step, like, and, and I know we have our parents that have told us like, you know, just do the best wherever you go. And it's, it sticks with, it sticks in our mind, but we usually don't do it. But at this point, I was like, God, I, I really need you to help me be content because I need to be elevated. And so I know that if I'm content and if I'm truly giving my 110%, he's going to elevate me. And when I tell you like the position that I'm going into, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't even be in that position right now. Like essentially I'm under qualified by paper, essentially, like I haven't even worked for this company long enough to take this position, but they saw, they saw the experiences of my last position where they were like, what you did this. They allowed you to do this. You grew that fast. Yeah, I did. Because instead of sulking about it and saying, why me? I was able to say, how can I make the best out of this situation? Right. And so I also am a believer of how long do you make the best out of a situation, out of a situation, right? I don't think that we need to just stay and wallow and, and self-sabotage by saying, well, I'm just going to make the best out of this situation, right? Like that was for our parents' generation, I believe, right? But as for us, yes, we are the millennials that are like, nope, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. But it's a difference in saying like, I'm not doing this for this long, this uh, for this long, or I'm not doing that for that long, right? So build a plan. And that's what I did. I said, you know what? I don't like this, but I'm going to be true to who I am. And I'm going to try, try to be the best at whatever I'm currently doing. Because I promise you, people are watching, people are looking, and more importantly, like, why wouldn't you want to try and be the best at whatever whatever you're doing, right? Because I just think that everybody wants to say like, oh, well, I want to make, I want to do this. But how do you even know that if you get that opportunity that you want, you even have the dedication and the commitment and the discipline to, to make it, to make it in that thing, said thing that you love. So if you can develop your character prior to you even stepping into that thing that you just love so much that you want to do, I promise you, it'll just carry over. So for me to build that character, that discipline and that work ethic, doing something that I felt like, I was like, why am I doing this? Like, this is not me. When I transferred over and I'm now transferring over to this new position, it's so innate. Like, I remember the, the guy that hired me, he said, look, man, like we hired you because of your work ethic. They looked at my numbers from a year back. They looked at my numbers from a 30, uh, you know, 30 days back. And they're just like, look, like your work ethic is absolutely different. After they called my references, after they, and that was the underlying statement. So when I answer your question, I'm always going to say like, I don't care if you hate where you are, develop a plan first to know that you're not going to just do this forever. Right. But while you're there, like, please, 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 please. And I know it sounds so like cliche or so like, you know, your uncle that just gives you this advice, but your uncle is right. Like do the best with what you have, because the only way to multiply that is, is, is by doing that. So that's what I would say. That's some, that's some good advice, especially since I like that you brought up that you're always being watched by somebody, even if they don't tell you that they're yep. watching you, somebody's got their eye on you. Yep. So to even enter into a space where you realize that you can't stand what you're doing, like you, you love this. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be clocking in. I don't want to be working with these people, but this is the opportunity that I have. Even taking those opportunities to just extrapolate worth ethic skills mm -hmm. and being on time for things, being neat about things, being organized about things, showing up as best as you can, even if it means giving yourself a pep talk in the parking lot to, nope. to nope. be in that building again or work with these people again, someone is watching for your character, mm -hmm. right? And that'll speak volumes. And eventually when it is that time to transition, people are going to see the fruit of that because you've been practicing it 
for a right. while. You've been putting right. in that work. And, you know, I, uh, I hesitate when people say, you know, if you live out your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. I, I personally believe based like based on what you've said, doing things that are not really what you think you should be doing, or you don't really want to be doing at this time, but it's just what's going on. And you be, you need to be a good steward of that season. Mm -hmm. It prepares you to push through the parts of your passion the aspects of your passion that actually aren't your favorite because yep. everyone has some aspect of what they would love to do that they actually don't enjoy. Right. Something. And it could be small. It's like, Oh, I hate talking about the budget, but let's talk about the budget or, right. you know, I don't want to have to rehearse my lines and remember, I wish I could just have them already memorized, but here we are going through the lines again or whatever the case may be. It doesn't even matter. There's always something that, you just kind of want to get through it so you can get to the good part of your passion. But it's those times where you've had to kind of quote unquote suffer through those seasons that aren't the best and thinking about the future where you're trying to go that allow you to be elevated right. in the future. So I love that advice. I'm thankful for that advice. And I appreciate you for sharing your story. That was a really yeah really great story guys that had suspense and romance and everything that was what that was right. like, oh, I loved it okay yes dude <laughs> thank you so much for coming on my show how can how can people reach out to you listen to you listen to your show um oh yeah, yeah, yeah. a little plug for your show because I'm always about promoting other podcasters so how no I appreciate it I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. But um, you can find me on Instagram at I am Brandon Strong. That's my personal. Um, you guys may love that page. Or if you are into listening to podcasts, you can jump over to Purpose Driven Risk Podcasts on um, any platform. Really, Purpose Driven Risk Podcast is my handle on IG for my podcast page. But you can also find that on my personal page. You tap the link in the bio. It'll take you to my YouTube where you can watch a visual um, representation, or if you want to just pop your, your headphones in and, and listen on your jog or whatever it may be, or your walk. Um, I'm on Apple, I'm on Spotify, I'm on Google, Stitcher, Amazon, um, pretty much like you, anywhere that you can listen to anything, you, you'll probably find me. Um, so yeah, go ahead and tell me what you think about the podcast. Um, but yeah, Candace, I, what I enjoyed it. Like this is this whole setup. I'm telling you guys, like you guys, Man, you guys don't understand. Like, she's good at what she does. I'm telling you. I'm te and I'm gonna say that because I am now studying, you know, like just the art of podcasting. And so I appreciate you, you know, ha having me on. And um, the whole concept of First Paso is like, I'm sure you've had, like, I've listened to amazing stories already, you know, in like, what do you want? Like, I know you've had like more than 50 episodes at, well, this, at this point. Yeah, I'm, I'm at like, uh, hundred something okay okay yeah yeah yeah. so i'm o i'm only on 50 right um so <laughs> there's a lot so <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot but I, I just i just appreciate you you know highlighting that that first step i say that because a lot of people love and love 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 to talk about the last step the end how mm -hmm. th what the result was and like for you to have a platform highlighting the first step it really 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 is um i haven't talked about some of the things that i just talked about in so long um, because I'm, I'm just in the space of where I am currently in life now. And I forget like, you know, that first step and how, and the emotions that came with it, um, and how people need to hear that. So, so yeah, you know, shout out to big God for giving you this <laughs> I idea. Um, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate that. And yes, shout out to the big God for real, for real, um, has been quite, quite a journey for those that have literally followed me from the beginning. It has right. been a journey and you know what? I just, I lean into it one day at a time. So it's this, that's the season that I'm in and I'm, I'm soaking in all the parts. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, ideas about today's episode, or if you want to be on the show, Go ahead and go to www.firstpaso.com. You can listen to it there. 
and obviously on all of your podcasting sites. And you can find out ways to support the podcast on my website as well. Otherwise, thank you guys. Take care. Stay safe. God bless. Love you guys. We'll talk soon. Brandon, dude, thank you again so much. And we'll talk soon. All right. All right. Bye.